Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the tech industry Armageddon that's going on right now. Uh, this article from the Financial Times, Bye Bye Massages and Free Food, Big Tech cut, Cuts Back Office Perks as Chill Descends on Sector. We've talked about the cutbacks a few times for different companies prior to this video. Yeah, and uh, some of the perks that are being cut frankly needed to be cut. We talked about how there are no more masseuses at Google. They're calling um, it health and wellness benefits. Health, health and wellness benefits. Uh, in-house laundry. In-house laundry. They talk about people bringing their dogs, their dogs. Well, I don't see any problem with that unless someone's allergic. I uh, mean, bring your dog to work sounds like a great day. But, uh, you know, a lot of people have been calling these tech companies adult daycares for a while now. <laughs> what? Sorry, that's kind of funny. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad at first, and and kind of what happened was to to as I understand, because I used to work in tech. I didn't work in Silicon Valley, but I worked for a tech company. And to to attract top talent, if they couldn't pay more, a lot of times what they'd do is be like, hey, you know, we've got a bar downstairs, and we've got you know pinball and stuff. That that's a perk. Can't pay you more, but we can be more generous with this or that. Uh, and one company I work for is like, we can't pay you more, but we can be be uh, be more generous with time. If you need time off for things, or if you want to split work from hey, home. Hey, a lot of the tech companies you work for, it's like, we can't pay you more, but that sucks for you. Yeah. Make right. sure you're here more hours. Yeah. Well, that, that is also <laughs> Let's true. Be honest. But we're going back to that. But that, that's how this started, right? That's how it started. And then what happened was word got out that, oh, Google has, you know, uh, gourmet lunches and, you know, they're doing all this stuff. And it's basically, and they, they made fun of it on kids' TV shows, for God's sake, talking about tech startups being you know, just wasting money. They're like, oh, we got a basketball court. We got this, we got that. And everybody's like, what do you do for a living? And they're like, I don't know what we do exactly. We're just a company that has this stuff. Don't you want to come work for us? We've got venture capital burn, baby. Pretty much. And uh, look, it's it's over. It's ending. I mean, geez, uh, now even getting people back into the office is a challenge. Uh, YouTube contractors are going to go on strike because they want them to go back into the office. Well, to be fair, some of the, some of the okay, these are ones that actually deal with complaints because a lot of times it's like you, someone flags something and then you can't get hold of anyone to fix it when it's like a false flag. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm just like, you know. Yeah, no loss there. Well, okay. So there are a couple things going on here. One, they're they're blaming uh, macroeconomic. What is there? Headwinds. It's a new COVID. It's all it was COVID's fault. Now it's macroeconomic. Um, but there's another theory. This was sent to me by D. I don't know if he wants his name. Uh, put out there or not, but they're theorizing that tech companies are using the threat of recession to lay off a bunch of people they've been wanting to get rid of for a while and the cut back on perks they've been wanting to get rid of for a while. They so just, you're the people that would want to use those perks often and yell the most and complain the most. And yeah. And look at how this happened. It started with Twitter. Basically, it started with Elon Musk going in and, and gutting Twitter and uh, you They're know, like, oh, we can get away with it too. Yeah, and that's exactly what they think is going on. They're like, well, wait, if Twitter can still function, you know, we can debate as to whether or not Twitter's functioning well now. But if Twitter can still function with fewer people, so can we. Twitter can cut all these perks and force people to come back to work or tell them they're fired if they don't. So can we. And that's what's going on. I think what happened was these companies got away from their managers, and basically the employees were running the roost. And now they're like, yeah, you're going to go back to work. But then the flip side of that is. Uh, the people that are left are going to be working a lot harder. Yeah. I'm sure. Sadly, that is how it works. So let's talk about all this. Before we get into it any further, please sub please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 290, almost 291,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, we do talk about tech as it relates to pop culture. Since we're talking about YouTube, and we're talking about Twitter and those companies. Uh, yeah, it relates to pop culture. And we've been seeing a lot of people getting laid off. And uh, look, I'm not like, hey... Yay, they're firing people. Some people need to go, you know, but uh, there are some people that are going to get caught up in, in all of this. But um, yeah, check this out. They're like, uh, Nicole Say has say Sai has amassed millions of views on TikTok by sharing videos of a typical day working for Google. Yeah, it's not going to load now. Take it down. Uh, upon entering the office in one, she grabs a handful of sweets at reception, takes a couple of video calls in themed meeting rooms adorned with gold sequin or butterflies, and hangs out with Douglers, the dogs of staffers, and of course, everything you see in the office is free. She declares in her voiceover lunch before wrapping up her day in a massage chair. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. 
On a recent Sunday though, uh, Cy went viral with a starkly different video after posting a day in the life of getting laid off at Google. Captioned with the hashtag, hashtag corporate life, the montage of shots include a gray computer screen locked out of work accounts, uh, Cy crying and scenes at Disneyland where she had sought solace. Maybe she, is she the one that took the sparklers? No. To Disneyland? No, I, I, there's a, that, that wasn't this person, but some idiot influencer snuck sparklers into Disneyland and put them on well, like a paper hat with like a cake and lit it on fire in front of the uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle. Yeah. Oh, God. So yeah, they're basically saying after a years long hiring spree to support ambitious growth plans, big tech is reigning in its cost base after sector wide plunges and share prices triggered by highest interest rates, blah, 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 blah. We hired too many people that don't do enough work. We're not making the money to support them. We wanted to get rid of them for a while, but we really couldn't. Well, what do you think is going to happen when they're spending all their time on Twitter yelling about, you know, politics? Well, that's just it. And I think it just like, it just ballooned. And again, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I think it was originally they would offer these perks to attract, because they were competing to attract top talent. And then it just became an expectation of like, yeah, you're going to get massages and, and only have to work like a half an hour a day, you know, maybe from home, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, it's fine. We're just going to keep paying you because there's infinite money. I'm reading this. He said some of the things that the Silicon Valley did, they used an array of benefits and freebies to attract and retain talent. Yes. Um, preferably wearing branded clothing. When signing a contract at a big tech group, staffers have grown to expect free or heavily subsidized food with multiple cuisines in the canteen. Trendy office space is another must with plenty of breakout spaces for catching up with colleagues and blowing off some steam. Offices are awfully uh, kitted with gyms and game rooms to keep body and mind healthy. Yeah, well, it's not keeping the bottom line healthy, is it? No, but this is like, this is like, <laughs> no wonder some of these people uh, that are so out of damn touch on the internet, this is what their life is. This is not the life of a, of a corporate America for most people. No. It's really, truly not. They were living in another reality. They were living in a bubble. And a lot of them, they got jobs right out of college. So they never knew what going to work for a regular, normal, normie employer in like Idaho was like. And they actually, a lot of these people thought it was beneath them. These are the same people, you know, working for, uh, you know, digital media outlets that were telling coal miners to learn the code. Yes. Know. Yeah, I remember. And yeah. now they're losing their jobs in droves because it was never sustainable. But they don't understand how the economy actually works, how money actually works. Uh, nobody. I mean, I, I can't imagine that people would have all these perks and not ask questions like, where's the money coming from to pay for this? You know, I mean, I've been at companies where they're like, yeah, we're getting rid of the free coffee. Because we can't afford the coffee anymore. Yeah. Well, I'm reading this last part. We're talking about how we're talking about Twitter. And they're going on about how they had to reduce, but to go to partially paid food policy and reduce some subsidized travel and mobile phones. Well, this is, this is, this is Elon Musk, okay, Twitter. Yeah. And then they said that, and more consequently for some workers, reports have indicated fertility support benefits are being reduced. A lot of, a lot of, uh, health, fertility support a lot of benefits? health insurances do not even offer any kind of coverage for, you know, maternity or, you know, those kind of things. You know, that that's just the way it is. For most people, you don't get that covered. I mean, it's shit. And I don't agree with it. One iota. Stuff like that should be covered. But a lot of people don't have it covered. Yeah. People from other countries are always surprised when they're like, you know, in America, there's there's no paternity leave. If, if you're a working dad and, you know, your wife is off, you're expected to go back. To, you might get that day off, uh, but you're expected to go right back to work, you know. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them don't even have maternity covered. I know no. we had insurance for your company. We didn't have a lot of things covered, and that was included. No. Yeah. Uh, we had a health savings account that we would dip into for that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it wasn't because it was basically like if you got pregnant, that's on that's on you. Mm -hmm. you know? It's wrong, but that's I mean, it's the reality of the situation. Uh, for some employees who have come to, like, working remotely in the pandemic, office perks might be less of a draw than it once was. Um, there's no such thing as a free lunch. It still applies. As one analyst put it, many workers are keeping their heads down, hoping that cutting a uh, Toro from the sushi bar is the only cut that affects them. Strangely, while the loss of perks can feel annoying in the moment, the gifting, the gifting or removing of perks tends to have very limited impact on our opinions of our workplace. The smoothie delusion is when firms think that gifting small luxuries makes us like our jobs more. In truth, it ha has no impact. No, this makes you more entitled. It makes you more entitled, and it takes focus off of actually getting the work done. And I'm just uh, like some of these people, like they're, I'm hanging out in a massage chair playing games. Like, what well, you know, when are you working? 
Oh my God. So yeah, now YouTube contractors are ready to go on strike. This is this is all over the place now. There's only 43 of them, but they work in Texas for YouTube Music and are preparing to go on strike this afternoon over being forced to return to the company's office in Austin this Monday, uh, despite some of these contractors being completely remote previously. See, now that's just it. You know, in that case, I, I kind of get why they're mad. They were hired to be remote. Like it wasn't like, oh, because of COVID, you had to go remote. They were hired that way. So I can... Get why they're a little pissed there because that was their job when they were hired. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people though they went to remote and then they're like, oh hey, um, this works out so much better for us. And in some cases, look, I'm gonna be honest. In some cases, there is no difference between working remotely and working in office. I've I've done both working in tech. I've done both, but at the end of the day, it's like it's what your employer is comfortable with. And if you're remote. Uh, out of sight, out of mind. I will tell you that you're you're the first ones to get cut. That's true, but see, I'm just looking at it this way. Like, you know, I get it. Like, if people were called back in after the pandemic and they were mad that it won't go back in, but their job was in house before, I can see them getting like you know upset. But like, hey, they have every right to call you back because that was your job. But the people that were hired to be remote to begin with, that that case, I will agree with them for being mad because that was not the deal when they were hired. No. No. Um, so the theory here, and again, we've been hearing macroeconomic headwinds. We've been hearing la la la. You know these, yeah. The, you know different uh, different tech companies aren't doing very well. Revenues down, whatever. In some cases, it's not really down that much though. And the theory here is that again, they're using this to get rid of problematic problematic employees to to right size without having all the backlash. Because if everybody else is laying off. Everybody else is tossing people overboard. You can be like, well, it was just the macroeconomic headwinds. Right. You know? we're, just, we're just doing what everybody else is doing. We didn't just lay off 10,000 of the most obnoxious employees ever. Um, no, no, we did it because, you know, that's just the way the world is now. And, um, you know, I think we're going to see a lot, a lot more of this. Probably. I think we are. And uh, I would say your best bet at staying on wherever you're at is to actually do your damn job and stay off of social media while doing your job, unless your job is social media. Yeah, be productive. Be productive, because if they're looking at your work that you produced that week and they're like, oh my God, you're tweeting like 300 times a day. When did you actually, and during work hours, when did you actually get work done? Probably don't like, you know, bad mouth your employer on social don't media. Don't bad mouth your employer. Don't start shit. Don't threaten to cancel people. You'll probably be okay. You might not get your smoothie. You might not get your massage. But you'll get a paycheck, and that's more mm -hmm. than a lot of these people are getting, right? So are we ready to wrap this up? Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.